Hey, hey, I'm DJ, and today we're going to talk about how to safely and effectively power your GPUs and your risers in your crypto mining rig. You see, powering your GPUs and risers is one of the first hurdles that you must overcome whenever you're creating a crypto mining rig. And yet all of the information on how to do so safely and effectively is scattered across various mining forums, Reddit posts, and YouTube videos. Today, I wanna to give you an in-depth analysis on the many different ways that you can power your rig all while not burning your GPUs, and more importantly, your entire rig, to ashes. And even if you are a seasoned miner, you're going to want to stick around. In this video, I've gathered tons of little tidbits of useful information from around the internet that I think you'll find useful. Additionally, I'll be giving helpful real world examples to help you understand not only the how of powering GPUs and risers, but also the why. So without further ado, let's get started right after you uh, hit the like button. Let's start with the humble GPU. Okay, so you might know how, on any given GPU, you will find a few different power connections on its side. Your main connections will be single or dual 6-pin PCIe connectors, single or dual 8-pin PCIe connectors, or the good old weird 1-8-pin and 1-6-pin PCIe connector. The connectors on GPUs, risers, and PSUs are all female ports, and to power any one of these components, you'll of course need the accompanying male cable. You can identify the male and female connectors using anecdotal evidence, and you'll find that the male connectors come in both 6-pin and 8-pin configurations. Oftentimes, you'll find that an 8-pin PCIe connector can be turned into a 6-pin connector by disconnecting the two leftmost pins on the side. This will be important to remember later, because doing this significantly reduces the max power that can run through that part of the cable. Additionally, you'll often find cables that are daisy-chained to make two 8-pin or 6-pin connectors on the end. This does not mean that the power available to this cable doubles, but rather that the power can be distributed across both connectors up to what each part of that cable can handle. On a riser, you'll find a few different connection types. We'll talk more about riser connections in a moment, but first we need to consider our second important point. The three connectors you'll most likely encounter when building a rig are as follows. The first is SATA, everyone's favorite fire starter. Next is Molex, the elder of the bunch, and previously mentioned PCIe, the best of the best. Let's look at SATA. How can you safely power your mining rig with a SATA cable? Okay, do not use SATA to power your risers. I repeat, do not, under any circumstance, use SATA. But what makes SATA so bad? Well, the official SATA pinouts suggest a maximum output of 54 watts. 54 watts across a single cable. That's literally not even enough to power any modern mining GPU whatsoever. Even the remarkably efficient 6600 XT or 1660 Supers use about 70 to 75 watts at the wall when mining Ethereum. I don't even think it's worth getting into detail. A SATA cable is a no-go 100% of the time. On some cheaper risers, you will find a SATA connection. Just because it is there does not mean you should use it. More premium risers won't even have a SATA connector. And for a good reason. SATA is not only a fire hazard, but in my opinion, it's ugly and should feel bad. Okay, I think I've made my point abundantly clear. So how about we move on to something a little less clear, Molex. Molex is weird. The four pin Molex connector is a graveyard standard with its first iteration coming out in 1963. Yes, it's that old. Since then, it has undergone a few revisions that make it more difficult to quantify a maximum safe wattage. To clear up any confusion, we'll make a few assumptions. The Molex cable you are using is not older than 10 years old, and the cable that you are using has standard 11 to 13 amp rated 0.093 inch pins. To be safe, only use brand new Molex connectors that have come with the brand new power supply or verify the amperage and pin sizes on your chosen manufacturer's website. Let's use 11 amps as our baseline. The Molex connector pulls power from both the 12 and 5 volt lines of your PSU, but for the sake of safety, we'll assume risers only use the power from the 12 volt pin. You can calculate power in watts by using the formula current times voltage. If we take one power pin's 11 amps and multiply that by the 12 volts coming from the PSU, 
we get 132 watts as the max power you can safely run through a Molex connector. In the case of a 13 amp Molex connector, that number jumps up to 156 watts. Again, make sure to verify the ratings of your specific Molex connector as they are not all created equal. If you look at a Molex cable, you'll often find multiple headers along its length. While you can theoretically use all of them to power one riser each, you 100% should not. In fact, you should never use more than two of these connectors on the same cable, and the only way to guarantee safety is to use one Molex cable per riser. To ensure maximum safety, you can always apply the 80% rule. Basically, that just means not exceeding 80% of the theoretical max. That way, you know that there's no risk of burning a cable. Now let's move on to the best, the most amazing and outright wonderful connector of all, PCIe. If you want to not destroy your mining rig, subscribing to my channel, I mean using PCIe is what you need to do, hands down. Let's look at this 6-pin PCIe cable. If you look on the internet for safe PCIe 6-pin cable power, you'll probably come across search results that say 75 watts is the max that this cable can handle. Additionally, you'll see that the safe maximum for an 8-pin is 150 watts. This is only partially true. For one, these figures are often quoted by PSU manufacturers and they adhere to widely accepted standards considered safe. Keep in mind that exceeding these safe ratings is of course not intended usage, so anything past this should be done at your own risk. In reality, the amount that you can safely run through each cable is actually a lot more. Let's go back to that 6-pin PCIe cable. If we look at the official specifications for the 6-pin housing, we can see that the max current per contact is 9 amps. 6-pin PCIe connectors often have 3 contacts that carry this current. If you look at this diagram, you'll see that the middle contact is either not connected or the third additional power pin. It's very important that you go through each one of your own 6-pin PCIe cables and verify that these contacts are there. For the sake of safety, we'll be using two power pins as a reference. 12 volts will run through each power pin from your PSU. This is all the information that we actually need to determine the max power. If we take two contacts at 9 amps and multiply this by 12 volts using the same power formula from earlier, you'll see that we get a max wattage of 216 watts. We can repeat this process for the 8-pin connector. Assuming a 9 amp max, you'll see that an 8-pin can theoretically handle up to 324 watts. However, for the sake of even more safety, it's better to assume a max current of 8 amps per contact when using an 8-pin connector. With 8 amps per contact, an 8-pin PCIe connector can safely handle up to 288 watts. If you want to be super safe, you can also assume a max current of 8 amps for a 6-pin PCIe cable as well. This would give you a maximum power on a 6-pin cable of 192 watts. Whew, that was quite a bit to digest. It can sound overwhelming at first, but making sure that you're getting quality cables from either your original manufacturer or third parties can prevent you from turning your crypto mining GPUs into baked GPUs. These numbers are the basics, and while there are certain cables that can handle over 400 watts no problem, it's best to stick to these numbers as a baseline. Let's talk about splitters. Splitting a cable may be necessary to power your components if you don't have enough male or female connections to power all of your risers and GPUs. In this instance, I strongly recommend that you don't adapt, but rather split or extend. You may come across some pretty crazy adapters that should definitely be avoided. While it may seem that these can be used to power your GPU or riser, they are almost never meant for that purpose. For example, these fire starters, or I mean Molex to SATA adapters, were probably handed down by Satan himself. Unless you were planning on having fried GPU with a side of melted SATA cable, I'd probably stay away from them. A good PCIe splitter will look like this. It's a rather simple cable that has the same effect as a daisy chain PCIe cable that I showed earlier. Since not all PCIe cables that come with your power supply will be daisy chained, it may be necessary to pick a few of these up. I will link the ones that I personally use down in the description. Using all this information, let's look at a few different ways to go about powering your GPUs and their risers without setting them on fire. Our first scenario is a single RX 580 GPU and a single riser. The mining TDP of this card specifically on Ethereum is 90 watts. Side note, when I say mining TDP, this includes both power draw through the GPU from the PCIe connector and the riser. Knowing this, we can figure out that powering both the RX 580 and its riser will not be an issue. Since we know this card only really draws 90 watts mining, we can totally use just a single daisy chained PCIe 8 pin cable. If you don't have a daisy chained 8 pin, then you can just use one of those handy dandy splitters to power this card and its riser. 
Do keep in mind that the 8 pin versus 6 pin PCIe max power rules still apply to these, and as you can see, this one is a 6 pin splitter. That means we can, with certainty, have a total of 216 watts running through the splitter without having any issues, despite our cable being able to poop out 288 watts. But what if I want to power two 580s in their risers? Can I do that with a single PCIe cable? Well, let's look at an example. Here we have a daisy chained PCIe cable. In order for this specific configuration to work, you will need a PCIe cable with more than just one male connector at the end. We know that we can use one splitter per end of the 8 pin cable to power each 580 and their riser safely because 90 watts plus 90 watts is still less than the theoretical max of 288 watts. Additionally, our 6 pin splitters, which can safely carry 216 watts, are each only carrying 90 watts, so we are safe there too. This specific configuration is completely safe. Because we are only using 180 watts, we are well under the theoretical limit of 288 watts anyway. Okay, let's get a bit crazy here. 3 GPUs, 1 PCIe cable. How can this be accomplished safely? First off, unless you know exactly what you are doing, you probably should not try this. However, this is a fantastic example of a more complex setup. Okay, a 1660 Super and two RX 580s. We know the 580s have a mining TDP of 90 watts. This 1660 Super in particular has a mining TDP of 70 watts. 90 plus 90 plus 70 equals 250 watts, which is less than the theoretical limit of 288 watts. With those numbers, we know it's possible. However, we run into one issue. There are not enough connectors on the end of this daisy chain to PCIe cable. So let's do something crazy. Take one, two, three splitters and attaching them like so gives us six male PCIe connectors for all of the GPUs and their risers. You may be wondering if chaining these splitters is safe. And the answer is, it does depend. If you choose quality splitters with 18 gauge wire or bigger, like the ones in the description, you should be fine going one chain deep. However, definitely do not go any deeper. Electrical resistance at the connector pins will grow significantly as you add more chained cables, and to be honest, I don't think you and I should be the ones to find out where along that chain, electricity turns into fire. To make this setup even more safe, we could just use Molex to power the risers instead. Here's the breakdown for this more complex setup. 3 GPUs as before, 3 Molex cables, 1 per riser, and 1 daisy chained PCIe cable with a splitter. I used GPU Z to measure the wattage being pulled through the risers and found that the 1660 Super gets about 50 watts from the riser. I was unable to determine the wattage at the risers for the 580, so I'll assume they pull about 25 watts from the riser. If we subtract the riser power from the total mining TDP of all 3 cards, because the risers are powered by Molex now, we can see that the PCIe cable is now only supplying around 150 watts on average, much safer to do in the long term. The biggest way to avoid exploding your rig is to choose quality components from quality manufacturers. Do not even think about cheaping out on your cables and definitely not your risers. If you do decide to cheap out on something like a riser or power them with SATA, that mistake will come back to haunt you and don't say I did not warn you. Trust me, take one look at the GPU mining subreddit and you'll find that rig fires are a whole lot more common than you would first imagine. Alright, I think that's enough from me. If you have any of your own useful tips that you'd like to share, you can do so down in the comments and I'd love to hear what you have to say. As always, thanks for watching and uh, make sure to subscribe. Yeah.